another key uh, topic that you discuss in your books um, is progressive exposure, which I think is something that's that that's extremely beneficial to learn about. So can you describe a little bit about what that is and how you take feedback from you know recent trades um, and basically use that as a guide to either scale up or scale down. So you're trading your largest when you're trading your best and uh, you know it, you're not really exposed when you're trading at your worst. So the goal of any trading strategy uh, should be, of course, you want to make a profit. We ask most people, what's your what's the goal of your strategy to make money? Right. OK, well, maybe we take it even further and say, well, the goal is to make more of my winners than I lose on my losers. OK, that's the holy grail. But the real goal that you really have to be care you, you have to try to focus your strategy in this direction um, or in these two direction is two directions are. You want to make sure that your strategy forces you to be trading your largest when you're trading your best and your smallest when you're trading your worst. And that you want that to be sort of automatic. You don't want to have to say, oh, well, I like the market here and now I'm going to trade larger. You want to have some type of mechanism that forces you to trade larger when, when things are going well and forces you to trade smaller when things are not going well. And that the reason why is because the average person, what they normally do is they'll, they'll, when the market takes off and it looks extended and it looks like it's overbought um, and they get some profit, they sell into it and then they get, there's a lockout rally happens and they sit there and they just watch it and they don't make any money in the bull markets. And then when the market rolls over, they think it's, you know, it's oversold and they start trying to double down and get even. And before you know it, they're trading large into a downtrend and they're trading small into an uptrend or out during the uptrend and, and in during the downtrend. So you want to be when the bull markets are happening, you want to be heavy. You know, uh, Stanley Druckenmiller said, you know, you got to you got to be a pig every now and then you got to be a pig in the market to make big money. You also have to know when to be a chicken. So it's to me, it's sort of, you know, knowing that that shifting between pig and chicken is is really, I think, um, one of the keys to the difference between a real professional trader and everybody else. This is something like Mark Ritchie, who you know is side by side with me uh, daily, and we discuss this stuff all the time. Um, he's really good at that. You know, him and I both are really good at stepping on the gas when things are going really well. We'll slam it to the floor and just get incredibly aggressive and make tons of money in just a short period of time. And then we have all this, the luxury of sitting out for extended periods of time and not fighting when, you know, there's all this noise and the market's difficult. And then we're in cash and you know, I'm always in cash when the market's in a downtrend. You know, I haven't, I've never been caught in a downtrend ever. Not even when I didn't, not even when I didn't know what I was doing in the beginning in the 87 crash, I was even out. I would at least bend with the market somewhat. So um, that's, that's the key. Perfect. And, I kind of want to dive a little bit deeper into that and maybe use an example. Uh, given we're in a correction now and, and a lot of people are completely in cash, uh, say we do see setups start to emerge. We see those leadership groups starting to show relative strength. Um, how would you go about putting on some test trades and then if those start working, increasing that size and, and how fast would you do it and what kind of position size would you get to? Okay, so you, I, I forgot. I'm sorry. I didn't really address your question. Your question was about progressive exposure, or at least your comment was. So um, so ex progressive exposure is really, it's a concept that I think is misunderstood by most people, but you should really, that's, that's the concept you should really dig deep into, you know, my explanations and then work with it because it goes hand in hand with your risk management with stop losses. And a perfect example is, um, if the market were to start, or let I say the market, but let's just say stocks, stocks were starting to set up and there was some stocks that met my criteria, I wouldn't just plunge in and just start, you know, buying like crazy. I would buy some small positions and see if they work from a very low risk standpoint. So I would have smaller positions from a very low risk. So overall, my risk would be very, very small. So I can do that a bunch of times and not get myself in trouble. So now if I get some traction, I've now gotten some profits and I would use those profits to then finance a bigger position. That's now financing my risk. And seeing as you're in Vegas, um, I might as well use a poker analogy because I always use poker analogies. I used to play a lot of poker in my day. And um, uh, when, when I used to go and go to the casino and I play on a the regular game that I normally played was a 10, 10 and a quarter game, uh, no limit. But a lot of times you couldn't get on on the table. There would be you know a wait list. So I'd go play on a smaller game like a one five, a one two, or a two five, or even a five ten. So th the goal was now, now 
two things can happen. Sometimes, you know, you go on the one, two, and you're, you're normally playing this big game. So you're like, oh, this is just a little game. You start to start throwing chips. And before you know it, you're at a, you know, you're at a pretty good loss because you didn't take it seriously. That's number one. But the, the key that I would try to do is I would try to build up a little bit of a bankroll on that smaller game and work myself up and maybe work to the two, five or the five ten table and build up a little there. And then when I get to a larger game, um, around tournament time, there would be 20, 25 quarter and a quarter games, 50, 100 games. Even these are big games. I want to go into those games with some profits and have some cushion. So I don't have this pressure on me. So I would build myself up. So I think, I think progressive exposure might've been, that might've happened with my stock trading. It might've actually been a natural progression from my poker playing <laughs> because that's how I played poker. I would always, even if I start playing, you know, in a game where I know people say, well, aces are, you know, you should just shove in with aces all the time or, you know, with certain probabilities. Um, and they just play aggressive right off the hop because the odds are the odds. But you have to remember those odds are over a hundred thousand hands or a million hands. I mean, I've lost with aces four four times in a row and shoved in all my chips in a big game and ended up with a gigantic loss. So the, relating that to the market, the market can stay bad longer than you can stay solvent. So you, you can't think of it in probabilities that way. You have to still, there's a risk of ruin. And depending on the size that you're trading, that risk of ruin, of course, is larger or smaller. So progressive exposure is simply just building uh, small success leading to larger success and building into uh, your larger positions and building down too when things aren't working. <laughs>